Today we're going to meet two families, a family of string instruments and a family of musicians. The strings, of course, are the harp and violin you've just been hearing, the family Angel Reyes, violinist, and his wife Jill Bailiff, harpist. Angel Reyes and his wife Jill have concertized extensively, presenting programs of music for violin and harp. Mr. Reyes was born in Havana, Cuba, and graduated from the Paris National Conservatory. His career as a concert artist was launched in Brussels when he won one of the coveted Isai Prizes in the first international violin contest. He made his American debut in Carnegie Hall with the Philadelphia Orchestra and has been a soloist with many of our major orchestras. Mr. Reyes is a visiting professor of violin at the University of Michigan. His wife, Jill Bailiff, is a harpist of national reputation. She is a graduate of the Curtis Institute and was a member of the Philadelphia Orchestra for five years and has concertized extensively throughout America. In a few moments, we'll meet Jill Bailiff and see how a harp is played and talk with Angel Reyes and discuss the unusual musical marriage of harp and violin and, of course, their own marriage as musicians. Right now, however, let's listen as the harp and violin join together to make music, the music of the 18th century composer George Philip Telemann. Telemann was a contemporary of Bach and Handel, and in his day, more famous than either. Among the thousands of works he composed are six sonatinas for violin and figured bass. One of these, the fourth, has been transcribed for violin and harp by Angel Reyes and Jill Bailiff. You can hear for yourself how the simple style of Telemann's music makes an ideal idiom for this an instrumental combination. Here now are Angel Reyes and Jill Bailiff playing two movements, Adagio and Allegro, from the fourth sonatina by George Philip Telemann.
Jill, that was just lovely. Thomas sounds beautiful with harp and uh, violin. Thank you. Thank you, Clyde. Well, in view of this fact of this lovely combination, can you tell us something about the literature for harp and violin? Is there a real literature to play? Well, we have an awful lot of trouble, Jill and I, in finding literature because the composers of the 18th century and 19th century had not discovered the harp or the violin together. They discovered one or the other, but they never put them together for some reason. Uh, the 20th century composer, they have now done an awful lot for us. So Jill and I have an awful lot of trouble when we want to put together programs and concertize. Uh, the only thing we can do is continue our research and try many works and see how they are suited to the harp. The problem, I'm sorry to sound a little bit uh, uh, unkind to the wife, comes from the harpist <laughs> because uh, I have no problem in so far as performance of the violin literature written with harpsichord or with piano. But the harp is a very mysterious instrument, quite complicated, uh, rather uh, difficult to handle in many ways. Uh, I learned all this not only from playing with uh, Jill, but from carting the harp around. <laughs> as a matter of fact, a friend of mine the other day asked me if uh, I carted the harp, and I said to him, yes, and I hope that when the time comes that I must go to the other life, uh, this may stand me in, in good at the gate and atone for some, some, of, some of my sins. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jill, uh, tell us a little about this harp. I'm sure our viewers are much more familiar with the violin. Yes. It has a good little um, mechanical device here, and could you give us a brief guided tour through the mysteries of the harp? Surely. This harp is uh, a modern model. As you notice, many of the harps are gold and carved and very ornate. Mm -hmm. This being a modern model is of a much uh, finer design and uh, the uh, strings are 47 on all concert grand harps. Uh, we have six and a half octaves and uh, for instance, the, each string has three pitches. The lowest you can get a string to sound, for instance, I'll choose the C string, is C flat. It is tuned in C flat. And then if I shorten the string, it raises the pitch to C natural. And if I shorten the string again, it raises it to C sharp, giving the three pitches of flat, natural, and sharp. Well, this is all possible, of course, only by the invention of the pedals I for the have, harp. I have the pedals. The pedals are connected to, there are seven pedals, mm -hmm. and they are connected to rods, which go up through the column and come down through the neck. The mechanism of the harp is in the neck. As you can see, all these discs turning. Mm -hmm. 
These pedals control those discs that shorten. And how many pedals are there down there? I have seven, one for each note. Of the scale. The three positions of each pedal. So it gives a possibility of playing all the notes in the chromatic That's scale. That's right. We right. play chromatics slowly, not rapidly. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you go about deciding what piece is practical for transcription and what is not practical? Well, uh, in uh, the pedaling is the most important feature because if the harmony is too intricate and too involved, uh, we get into a field of inharmonics on the harp, and um, we have to. We are restricted as far as our ability. Uh, many of us are very daring and have challenges. I many times play pieces with both knees on this side mm -hmm. so that I can get more pedal combinations. But um, the technique is very similar. Uh, our music looks like piano music, but the technique of playing the harp, we do not use the little finger. It's too short. You see, your position would be uh, badly formed if I put my little finger on the string. So we have a finger that pulls, another that pulls, pulls, and then the thumb pushes, and the other three pull. Oh, very interesting. How did this interesting and unusual duo get started in the first place? Angel? Well, music brought us together, Clyde. Uh, we uh, met and we began to perform in an informal situation, and uh, then we began to play public performances, and uh, finally, uh, one thing led to the other. I, I would say that our marriage was actually brought about through our musical association. And uh, we, actually the fantasy of Saint-Saëns was one of the earliest works that we performed and uh, it has grown a little more tender, shall I say, every time we play it because we are beginning to be at that age and at that time in marriage where we can reminisce about the past. I see. Well, the, the, you uh, then are implying that uh, as the marriage mellows, so does uh, the music for harp and violin, I take it. Yes, I'm sure this is uh, very true. Now, you have a, quite a complicated life, I know, with performing and uh, teaching, and you have a family also, do you know? Yes, we have two small children. And they complicate life, oh. as, particularly for rehearsing, I would gather. Very, very much so. <laughs> when uh, our rehearsing is uh, actually has to be scheduled, even though we're living together, we have to hire babysitters so that we can have everything uh, ready because they don't understand always the necessity of so much practicing and rehearsing. Might not agree with what they want to do. Well, they're very young. This is one of the problems. We hope that in time they will accept more the fact that we have these activities. But while the boy is seven and the girl is only two and a half. Well, tell us a little about this uh, Saint-Saëns piece now that we're going to hear. Well, the Science Sans actually is a marvelous virtuoso piece, uh, beautifully written for both instruments. He had, uh, he had the flair to uh, write something that was so idiomatic and so beautiful for both instruments and the blend. It's a very luscious and very romantic piece, as you will appreciate uh, after we perform it. Science Sans certainly went uh, way out uh, in, in expressing uh, there is a section in the middle that I would like to call to your attention which has a wonderful Spanish rhythm with a melodic uh, science sounds like many of the French composers uh, were so attracted by the Spanish folklore. Well, this has all been very pleasant and rewarding. Now let's listen as Angel Reyes and his wife Jill Bailiff perform the Fantasy for Harp and Violin by Camille Sasson.
That was the fantasy for harp and violin by Camille Sanson, a romantic piece played lovingly by Angel Reyes and Jill Bailiff, who have shown us that harmony in life and harmony in art can go hand in hand for the pleasure of us all. This program was recorded in the Ann Arbor Television Studios of the University of Michigan. This is University of Michigan Television.